life, I had such desire to see Northern Lights. And for years, I tried to pursue this wonder. Unsuccessfully, I might add. And here I am, back in Fairbanks, Alaska, the Aurora capital of the world, chasing Aurora again. But many unexpected things happened. My Northern Lights journey led me to completing my own painfully long self-discovery puzzle, my own truth and happiness. And this is how it all happened. This is already my third attempt to chase Aurora, but so far, skies just wouldn't clear up for me. I even traveled to Alaska in winter, battled negative 40 degrees, which believe me, coming from Southern California was not in my comfort zone, but still, no luck. Very hopeful we get to see Northern Lights today. They say it's, I mean, it's cloudy now, but I'm manifesting. I'm hoping that it's going to work out for me. Waiting for a car. We arrived early, so it's okay. We'll wait. Tonight I was scheduled to have Aurora chasing tour, so we headed home to unpack and get ready. We stayed in a cute, tiny house set in the setting of Alaska nature, just to really experience how Alaska feels in the fall and do a lot of thinking and writing to process life. I've been actively soul searching for years already, but something shifted in me in the last few weeks and I suddenly felt that my journey was coming to an end and I was ready to make some concessions and conclusions. I hate not sleeping. <laughs> There's only one day a year I cannot stand, which is New Year's Eve because I have to stay overnight. And here I am, the only time chasing Aurora is in the middle of the night. And our tour started like at 10. So I decided to do this. I don't usually nap, I'm not good at napping. So I decided like, okay, I need to nap so I can get through the night. And so we went, we got pizza, we got beer, I got tired, so I napped. <laughs> and at 10 o'clock, I was all ready for the thing. If you don't live in the area, chasing northern lights takes time to grasp. All stars have to line up. High aurora activity, clear skies. Not that I could predict aurora or weather when I was booking I'm the tour. The light show. <laughs> but before I continue, I owe you an explanation. Why chasing aurora was so important to me. Let's do it. Ever since I was a child, I had an imaginary window in my head through which I could see the world's most magical sceneries. Those were hard times for me, and it was my way to believe that the world is a beautiful oh, place. And the image of glowing northern lights was one of those sceneries. And while hard times have passed, the persistent dream to see Aurora for real has not. Activity of Aurora was, it was there, not strong enough, so, but strong enough to actually be visible. And I kind of knew that cameras definitely see, when you see all these gorgeous pictures, you know, online, that's camera, camera sees it. But we, our eyes don't see it. And it has to be super strong aurora, that, that uh, activity that you can actually like really kind of see it, you know? But it was just a little bit of a light coming loop. And then another one. And then there's nothing. The only beautiful thing was a gorgeous moon. <laughs> And I was like, oh my god, this entire time I was killing myself that I wanted to see and it was for that. <laughs> a little light this, a little light that. But this moon I can see it every day, all the time. And I was like, damn it, I could have had a good night. <laughs> These are photos that we took that night. But technically this is what I could see with naked eye. It was a beautiful night, but the magic that I was hoping for did not show up for me once again. And I suddenly felt tired, tired from chasing dreams, something that may never show up for me. And it was time for me just to let go and enjoy what I've got right now, which is plenty. And that made me think, 
how thinking, overthinking, overanalyzing really screws us up, totally screwed me up. You know, like I always had expectations like, oh, this is not working out this way. That is not working out this way. Everything is not the way I want it. And it never will be because what I want is not what I need. We live our life thinking that like, oh, you need to do this, you need to do that. We are taught to go to school so we can become this and that, right? We're not taught. There's no class at school to say what it is make, what will make you happy. Like, well, what exactly will make me happy? Or maybe like, am I happy this minute? I am in such a beautiful place. You know, oh, interesting. I've, I've heard those things before and I kind of understood that, but I never got it. Okay, I got it. Do you ever feel that things sometimes work out not how you want it, but exactly how they should? To such degree that you start wondering if you're living in somehow controlled simulation. So in the morning, we woke up to a crisp air and the bluest of blue skies. And the Aurora calendar app was predicting a high sun flare activity. And I just knew it. I knew that today I will receive what I was looking for. So my husband and I headed up north to give Aurora one last try. Your destination is on the right. Looking back, I know exactly why I needed to fail seeing Aurora for all these times. It was because I was not ready for it. Before I could walk through that magical window of my mind as a child, I needed to heal all the wounds of the past. Had to make so many hard choices and turns trying to get here. And thanks to that window, it was just too beautiful for me to quit. But if I quit, I would never find it. Life comes with a lot of shit. But it also comes with a lot of magic. But by worrying about the shit and worrying that magic is not going to happen, I end up keeping myself in a space where it's never enough. I will never be happy. So, oh gosh, look at that bird. So being present is really the way to go. Take it when it comes and take magic when it comes, you know? And, and that's all it is. And that's when you feel content, really. Not something I didn't know, but something that is just so hard to grasp.